Flying a plane in Battlefield, not too hard. Flying a plane in Arma, pretty hard. Flying an F-18 in DCS, pretty dang hard. Flying a frog foot in DCS, oh even God. harder. And then, and then there's the A-10. Um, the definition of difficult. You set a new weapon onto a pylon on the wing and then you have to click through six different menus to be able to tell the aircraft, hey, there's possibly a new weapon on the pylon of your left wing. You have to get a teacher that teaches you over two or three weeks of time, over two to three hour long lessons just to make you barely understand the basics of the aircraft. In DCS, every single piece of this aircraft is one-to-one -one simulated as close as you can get to the real life one. Every single button in the cockpit works as, as far as I know, all the mechanics are the same. If you fly this plane in DCS, you could hop into the cockpit of the real one and most likely fly a real A-10 just the same. Now, there's a lot more training and actual preparation that comes for that, but you do have the basics of the aircraft down in this simulator. So how do you get into learning one of the most complicated simulated aircraft in all of video game history. Well, you get a guy like Ralphie dude to help you out. Ralphie plays a lot of DCS. He's sat in the cockpit of this simulated aircraft for 10 plus years now. This guy is probably the number one dude you want training you how to fly this plane. But first, he won't he won't teach you by just flying the plane. You have to go through ground school first. Yeah, ground school in a, in a video game. Just like how we did in the F-18, you can't just sit in the cockpit and instantly know how to fly. You have to learn the different concepts of the plane and different pieces and technologies that the plane uses to be effective in the modern day battlefield. Each plane has its quirks and features to it, and this one certainly does as well. Primarily the 30 millimeter GAO cannon on the front that goes <laughs> It can destroy tanks, it can destroy airplanes, it can destroy basically anything. This plane is an air-to-ground machine. You can hold, I don't even know how many pylons this thing has. You can hold so many bombs, so many missiles. There's racks where you can just attach a three times missile rack on. It's amazing. There's so many possibilities with this thing. You learn very quickly when you're flying this thing the real-life advantages of the aircraft, like how long it can just stay up in the air because it's so fuel efficient and so slow that it really doesn't require much power or much fuel to keep it flying for two to three hours. Or how simple and effective and efficient the GAO cannon is on the front of this aircraft. Or how crazy accurate the targeting pod is when dropping bombs or AGMs and things like that. How crystal clear the thermal display is on that thing. It's a very, very impressive aircraft to say the least. The whole teaching process is impressive as well. Ralphie Dude had to teach me about the entirety of how a targeting pod works and how to slew it to targets and sort of things like that. It's very, very interesting the science behind these targeting pods and how they exactly work. Misunderstanding the methods at which the targeting pod works could make the difference between you hitting a target or missing a target by 15 feet with a 500 pound bomb. So ground school here was really important to allow me to not make those mistakes once I finally got into the plane. Once we were in the plane, it is a very, very slow process. First up, the startup is something like five minutes long. It's a uh, gruesome startup process. Once you're on the runway and you take off, you realize that you're taking off at about like one third the knots that you would take off an F-18 at. You also realize that this thing flies a little bit slower than a P-51 Mustang from World War II. The A-10 is slow, but that's not a very, very big disadvantage with what you have. You are carrying the most weapons for anti-ground or air-to-ground warfare of any plane in the entire game. You also have one of the most advanced damage models in the game. Like, you can lose the entire engine and you can still fly. Aircraft like the Frogfoot still have the old damage models, where it's basically just maybe there's some damage to, I don't know, six or seven pieces of the plane. While the A-10 can take a single shot to a computer and all of your heads-up display can go down, or certain parts of the targeting system pod can get shot and di get disabled as well. The survivability in the A-10 is very interesting as well, because with 
they were not lying when you are actually seated in a lead tub. I think there's like a titanium or a crazy heavy duty lead tub that you basically sit the pilot in and so that the pilot is safe from flak and anti-air fire from down below. Certain parts of the cockpit, like the front glass that vertically kind of rises above you, straight in front of you, that glass is bulletproof, I think, up to like a 50 BMG. But then the glass to your sides, I really don't think is very ballistic whatsoever. So it's very interesting. There's a lot of in-depth mechanics to this that have to be thought about all at once. And just like the F-18, over time, these mechanics turn from extremely intimidating to just a muscle memory sort of reaction. So first thing Ralphie taught me to do once we were up in the air is shoot the guns as well as try out the hydropods. Guns is very simple in the aircraft and it actually has its own little computer system to make it even simpler. In Arma 3 if you shoot the main gun on an A-10 the A-10 just starts rocking backwards. It's really hard to control unless you're in a very very fast dive and the aerodynamics of the aircraft kind of balance that uh, backwards force out. In the a10 though there's considerable recoil in DCS so it has its own little computer system called gun pack that automatically will adjust the aircraft to whenever you fire which is really really cool all you have to do is just hold down the trigger halfway it'll activate this kind of autopilot mode which hones you in down on the ground wherever your target is and then you squeeze the trigger all the way through and that's when the gun will fire that autonomous bot autopilot will kick in and automatically move the aircraft to adjust for the recoil coil of the main gun. Crazy cool technology there. The main gun is super powerful in this thing too. It can take out tanks, buildings, houses, really anything on the ground you shoot at, it will be destroyed by this 30 millimeter cannon. There's just so many rounds, such a high RPM, such a high explosive or armor penetrating round as well, and the ammo capacity that the pilot has means that they can shoot this gun on and off for maybe an hour or two. In a way, this is in my opinion one of the most unique aircraft I've flown yet because it has a gun as almost like its primary utility. The gun isn't exactly the best at anything, but if you need to shoot a lot of targets down and you really don't want to waste all your missiles or you have no missiles left, well, you have a huge gun on the front that's insanely good and easy to use. Plus, you can do maybe 30 or 40 gun runs before you run out of ammo. Hydropods are pretty similar as well. They use a very similar heads-up display. Hydropods, we've used them in Arma 3 quite a bit before. I usually just use those for kind of like light armored targets, maybe like a jeep or some infantry on the ground. They're pretty fun in this game as well. Their splash, their visceral splash is huge and ginormous, but Ralphie said that they don't actually do as much damage as it looks like, which I was kind of saddened by. But if there's like, let's say, a infantry heavy objective, then some high explosive hydropods would do that objective some justice. Throughout all of these gun runs and trainings we were doing, I was slowly starting to get a feel for the aircraft and what flying it was like. It's very different from any other aircraft I've tried before. The Frogfoot, you're flying fast and low. The F-18, you're flying uh, fast and high, and you're shooting targets from 40 miles away with AIM-120Cs, while the A-10 is this slow, heavy, tough beast of holding tons and tons of firepower and never having to worry about fuel whatsoever. It's just really, really different from what I'm used to. Then comes the complicated computerized stuff. A lot of people say that the A-10 is like a computer. It's just like flying a huge, ginormous Zydax-sponsored PC instead of flying an actual plane. And I definitely agree. At some points, you are pressing more buttons than you are holding onto the joystick in this aircraft. When selecting a dumb fire bomb, you have to click on an LCD display, and then you gotta select that bomb, and then you can select if you wanna shoot two bombs at the same time, or this is a really cool feature. You wanna drop the bombs within a certain distance of each other on the ground, which is super cool. Because then if you have like a convoy that's 150 feet long, you can set three bombs to release at a 50 feet interval. So you hit the front of the convoy, the middle of the convoy, and the end of the convoy. Super cool stuff. There's so many different heads-up display UI elements that you have to learn that I don't even remember them. It's just, you kind of have to, you kind of just have to figure it out. I will never sympathize for somebody that says that an Arma 3 plane is hard to fly. I have been fully spoiled by DCS. Anyways, after learning how to use the dumb fire bombs, the Mark 82s with 500 pound bombs, they weigh a lot, so you kind of want to get rid of them quickly, and there's possibly, I think up to six, I think you can put up to three on each pylon, so you could have an A-10 filled with like eight of these bad boys, but that would be very, very heavy. 
And then after the Mark 82 dump fires, we move to the GBU 12s. Now these are the ones that I remember from Arma 3 quite a bit. These are laser guided uh, bombs. You have to set the timer on when the lays needs to actually hit the target and when the GBU should start listening to that lays. It's very interesting here just how much difficulty goes into making a bomb go from dump fire to, or just kind of like just, you know, you're firing it and, and letting it go and letting gravity do the, the rest of the work. And then the difficulty of moving from that to a laser guided bomb where there's a lot of different mechanics and cameras and sensors and all that that has to go into it to make it really function. Laser guided stuff helps a lot though because that means that you can guide the bomb into a target really, really far away from a very, very high altitude. With dumb fire stuff, you kind of have to be dive bombing and really close to make sure that it hits within your area that you kind of want it to go, but they're rather inaccurate. They're not going to be something you use in a very precise bombing situation. If you're doing precise bombing, you use something like the GBU-12. The GBU-12 releases from the A-10, flies in kind of a dumb fire mode for a little bit, and then depending on whatever the pilot has it set to, it will at some sort of seconds before impact, it will actually open its eyes and look out for a laser beam from your aircraft. And wherever that laser beam is going to impact the ground at, that is where it's going to slew itself towards and start going and holding itself into that target. Then Ralphie Dude taught me about the AGM Mavericks. These things are some of the most difficult weapons to use on the A-10, but they're also some of the most powerful weapons to use. I remember these from Arma 3 myself. These are the ones that I would use to lock onto uh, enemy vehicles with. These are the ones that would be the backup of the backups. These are the, the most powerful weapons on board the A-10 in my opinion, just because they can reach out so far, they can lock on from so far away. Um, and the functionality between Arma 3 and DCS's uh, AGM Mavericks are not too far apart. With the AGM in Arma 3, uh, you have to just lock onto a vehicle, but the actual flight mechanics are pretty similar to DCS. In DCS, it's not just click R to lock onto any vehicle you can see, it's interesting. The AGM, when fired, will release itself from your aircraft and it will be looking in the direction of wherever you slewed it to look. So you'll use your targeting pod to line up a target, you'll tell the AGM to look at that target and lock on closely to that target, and then the AGM will release from the aircraft and stop listening to the, your aircraft entirely. It will then focus on whatever thermal signature was in its cone of sight wherever you kind of told it, hey, there's something here I want you to hit. It will focus on whatever thermal signature is there. Usually it'll be a tank or a BTR or maybe an aircraft that's parked on a runway. Or you can even force the AGM Maverick to hit a building if you really want, but that's not really that useful. You might as well just bomb a building. But the crazy thing about the Maverick is that you can lock on to something from up to, I think, 17 or 16 miles away which is insane. That means that you can't even visually see the object, but this missile can lock on and just fly straight towards it from 17 miles out. The longest I have ever ran before in a single run, I think was 11 miles, and that was middle school cross country. And afterwards I laid on the grass and just kind of looked up at the stars for a very, very long time. And then I went home and slept like 10 hours. <laughs> I am not, I'm not that fit, I guess. I mean, imagine the mileage between your home right now to your school or your work or whatever place you go to every day. That's probably a 20 or 25 mile trip, right? Imagine most of that trip being traveled by a single missile. Holy crap. And the AGM is so big and fat that it can really kill anything it hits. Like you hit the highest armor tank in the game, it will kill it in one shot, no doubt. So by far the AGM was the most impressive. I think I already knew the power of the A-10's gun. I think everybody does, but the AGM was a was a was quite a surprise. There's also a lot of different munitions that he showed me, like cluster munitions, and there's also like anti-ship munitions, which I don't know why you would be going after ships with an A-10, but just in case you have to. It took me three different different lessons to finally kind of get the idea of how to fly the aircraft, how to shoot things with it, how to, you know, basically do a very simple mission with the A-10, but for sure I'll be showing you guys some more A-10 stuff in the future because this plane is really, really awesome and it was a blast learning this plane. I think it was the most entertaining one to learn so far and I still have a lot to learn about it as well. I don't even know how to use countermeasures yet, but just like our F-18 that we started flying about two months ago or just like the frog foot that we started flying a month ago. This is going to be a adventure, but eventually we'll probably get 
pretty good at this plane. So I'm excited to show you guys that. So thanks for watching today, guys. Thanks for watching the adventure on the A-10 Warthog, the introduction to it on DCS. I know not much action was shown in today's video, but as this is such a complicated aircraft, it took a lot of training. And we still have yet to truly fire on an actual target on an actual PvE server, so that will be coming soon. Also guys, if you didn't know, I made a vlog channel. This will be a channel about some real life adventures. Uh, I'll link it down in the description down below. If you don't want to click the link, then it's just called Drewski. If you look up Drewski on YouTube, hopefully it doesn't show up Operator Drewski. Uh, but you'll find it, uh, the video is just in the description down below if you'd like to check that out. And I will see you guys in the next one.